a couple of interesting facts for you today. Uh, we remember those uh, bacteria that uh, divide symmetrically, that cannot be morphologically distinguished and if you simply look at them, but differ functionally, uh, I mean the ones that have the old pole and the young pole. So if you take two fractions of those bacteria, the first group will contain only bacteria that have the young poles. Say if we um, uh, assign numbers of divisions to mark the age of the pole, say one, two and three. And another fraction would consist of only the bacteria with the old poles, say uh, divisions 5, uh, 6 and 7, or maybe older. So if you uh, put those two groups in the fresh medium, uh, the young ones would outcompete the old ones, so the young bacteria would have the um, advantage. However, if you take the media from the, after the growth phase of a, a bacterial colony, um, so after the, uh, a large number of bacteria would live in the media and consume a decent amount of uh, nutrients, if you then remove the bacteria and just take the media and uh, put those two groups, then the old group, um, I mean the, uh, the bacteria that have the old poles would outcompete the young ones. This is very interesting because um, apparently those old bacteria are more adapted to the changing environment. And if you remember the GASP, the growth advantage in the stationary phase, um, that means that um, those bacteria after the rapid death phase, that 1% that stays alive in the culture, then it has after 10 days uh, the advantage because it gains mutations that allow those survivors to um, you know, su survive, and uh, that's their kind of evolutionary advantage compared to the rest, everybody that died, right? So um, those, um, that other second old pole um, bacteria group, those guys, they appear to be more adapted because they have some mutations that allow them to survive better in that experience, um, expired media well, expired, um, meaning um, the media that came from, um, uh, well, the group of bacteria that already lived in it. So that's interesting. It appears to be um, a kind of a mechanism of survival. So you would acquire new mutations and, um, you know, be better at living longer. Another interesting fact that I wanted to tell you is that uh, bacteria love um, glucose. I, they're just really, really, um, they have a sweet, sweet tooth. So they love their glucose. If you add glucose to the medium, bacteria would just, oh, they would divide, they would grow, they would love it. And then if you add more glucose, they would love it even more. But if you add too much, they would glycate themselves out of existence. And um, glycation, uh, it means adding a sugar molecule to a laboratory protein. Basically, that glucose would serve, um, would act as a poison, if you will. When it's too much, it would just bind to every molecule that is inside of a bacteria, which would prevent the bacteria from functioning well. So, um, so too much sugar is bad for bacteria, probably for you too. Anyways, um, there is this substance, it's called carnosin, and carnosin is a... Um, um, is a peptide, it's a small molecule that bears uh, quite um, significant anti-glycation properties. Basically, it prevents from um, sugar, uh, sugar from binding to uh, the molecules. So if you add that carnosin uh, molecule into the media with high concentration of glucose, the bacteria will not die. Um, this is just something to think about. Um, uh, role of um, glycation and, in particular, um, uh, the non-enzymatic uh, glycation that is going on in the uh, tissues as we age. It's one of the uh, features of aging. It's when, um, well, um, the products of uh, the glycation reaction um, damage our connective tissue.